Now, although we can use Excel for time, and it's very good at managing time, there are sometimes a couple of little hiccups that are worth noting and seeing how we can deal with them. If we had time, could we find the difference in a start time and an end time, therefore, to give us a duration? Yes, we can. As long as we give Excel the time in Excel time format so it understands what kind of time we're dealing with. If we take the time working file, for example, we have a sheet called difference and we can enter a start time. The times must be entered in hours, minutes and seconds. Now you can leave the seconds off and it will assume zero, but you can't leave the hours and the minutes off. So we need to put 11 colon zero zero for 11 hours, no minutes. The seconds will be assumed. When we tab through and come back, you'll see it assumes 11 a.m. So the seconds are assumed as zero. And then our end time could be 12.34. Again, we're going to assume the seconds are zero, tab through, and that's 12.34 p.m. If we want to do a time in the afternoon, it is easier to use a 24-hour clock because then Excel knows you're dealing with afternoon time. So we would do 15.15 as an example for quarter past three. And you can see in the bar at the top, it says 3.15 p.m. Now we could have typed 3.15 and added the p.m. ourselves. Just personally prefer to enter 24 hours and let Excel do the conversion between a.m. and p.m. And we carry on through until 17.15, which is 5.15 p.m. So having entered these two start and end times, how could we work out duration between them? As simple as taking away one from the other. So it equals the higher time, so the later time, Take away the start time. It gives me a duration of one hour 34 minutes. And the same here equals the end time. Take away start time. Exactly two hours. Now, if you wanted to work in seconds, perhaps because you were dealing with people's run times and things, then we could do that. In that case, we would need to make sure we entered a zero as the hour element. Zero, two minutes, 24 seconds. And the end time is zero hours. 3 minutes, 28 seconds. We can then replicate our formula down. And because we've copied from there to there, it's copied the formatting, and the formatting does not include the seconds, because here it assumed it didn't need them. So when we copy down, it says, well, you didn't need them before, you don't need them now. However, I need to see the seconds. So I would need to change the formatting by going to the number section, extending the number section, and coming down. You see here it says only hours and minutes. Let's see the seconds as well. OK. And then we see the exact difference, one minute and four seconds. So we can do duration, so the higher time, take away the lower time, and it will work with the hours, it will work with the minutes, and it will work with the seconds. Not a problem. It can understand each of those. The problem comes from you and Excel's interpretation. So here we didn't add the seconds, so it said, OK, you're not interested in them. And in the result, it said you're not interested in them. Here we did add the seconds, but in order to do that, we had to provide a zero for the hour element. Same here. And in the answer, we had to then reformat the cell as we copied it from above, where it already made the assumption you didn't want to see the seconds. So that's just a formatting issue. That's the straightforward bit covered. What about the difference in time when we go through midnight? So say, for example, we want to go from, say, 4 p.m. on one day to 8 a.m. on the next. What's the difference in time there? Let's come down a little bit and have the start time. Let's look at July the 1st, 2013, 1800. Need to widen to see the time. That's quite happily understanding that. Let's just widen this one already. And we're going to go through to July the 2nd, 2013, 8 a.m. 800. So Excel's assuming those and quite happy. We can do the takeaway 8 a.m. on July the 2nd, takeaway 6 p.m. on July the 1st, and I get a return of 0.583333. So that's the proportion of a day. 0.5833 of a day. But I'd actually like to see that in hours, so we need to format that as time. Now if I choose the little drop down and say, show me that as time, please, it shows me it as 2 p.m. So on a 24 hour clock, that's actually 14 hours. And if you work this out in your head, it is 14 hours. But how do I get this to show 14 hours rather than 2 p.m.? Because it's not a time, it's a duration. Well, I need to go into the extra little pop out again, into custom, and come down to where it's showing me. HMMs and SSs, there we are, hours, minutes, and seconds. Okay, and I'm showing that as 14 hours, no minutes, and no seconds. Now that I've actually set that up, if I change this, let's say 815, it then 
understands I'm now wanting to see hours, minutes and seconds. And it says actually that's 14 hours and 50 minutes gap between there and there. So we can do takeaways effectively on time, even when those times are on different days. We just need to again watch the formatting. The other little bit that needs a slight adjustment on the formatting is when you try to do cumulative time. So if you come into here, we've got some start and end times already, already entered for you, and then the difference. Now, if we highlight all of those differences, down in the status bar, it says sum 28 hours, 4 minutes, and no seconds. However, if we try to sum in here using an Excel sum function, it only gives me 4 hours and 4 minutes. That's because we've added the time up and it's effectively ignoring the full days. So it's ignoring the 24 hours and giving me the 4 hours remainder. If I highlight that, we can see it's 28.04, take off the 24 hours for a day, and I'm left with 4.04. If you need to see cumulative hours, then again you need to control and change the formatting. So we go into the little pop out, come down to the number options, and in this number list of choices, you're actually looking for H with a little square bracket around it. And when I choose that, you'll see in the sample, if you watch the sample there, that changes to 28 hours, 4 minutes, and no seconds. That's the one you want, the little H in square brackets, to effectively show cumulative hours rather than the hour of the day. So therefore, it's not taking out all the full days. So it would take out 24, if it went past 48, it would take the 48 off, and it would just leave as the remainder. With the H, it shows the cumulative. But then I will get to see what I've added up here, which is 28 hours and 4 minutes. So that's a couple of clever little bits with time. The difference between time, how you can control that when it goes over a day, and how you can do cumulative time when it's more than 24 hours.